Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This one here is one I look forward to each and every year. Uh, there are so many moving parts to this one, guys, but I find each and every year I find myself um, myself learning as I go um, because I think this is probably one of the topics that um, each and every year I get more questions about. Uh, if you're in, you know, what folks call flat-footed ground or flat ground, you know, uh, maybe this doesn't pertain to you, but those of us that live in Ridge Country, it's a huge, huge topic, right? It can be a huge, huge is issue, but there's so much power to be had when you learn and learn from it and, and with it. I just label it Thermals 101. So, uh, sorry for the Christmas uh, coloration theory here we got going on, but uh, let's look on the outside of that or above that. What we've got going on here, guys, is this one. I I really want to shed some light on some things and make this kind of kind of uh, simplify some things. Um, we're this is actually one of the real in depth uh, series, I guess you could say, a piece of the series, one of the videos on our training camp that we're going to re be releasing here, a real deep dive, probably an hour long topic on this. So if you're interested in that, that will be available through that training camp. And we're going to do multiple videos on it, guys. Don't get me wrong, but there's just so many moving parts that it it's it can be in depth, can be very lengthy. But if we just treat it as an overview, right, a, a cap, let's say, a learning, kind of taking that learning curve, and we just treat it as that, uh, you know, that 101, let's just cover some of the good things about it and the bad things. So if you're new to thermals, or if you're, even if you're, you know, um, it, it live in a ridge country, maybe some of this is going to spark some, some thoughts. AM, the rule is, right, the rule of averages teaches us that thermals, rise in the morning and the thermal set in the p.m., which is very true. That alone will get you about 50% of the way to understanding thermals. You just need to know that that thermal will always trump the wind. At some point, depending on the distance, depending on the, the ridge line, depending on the slope, all this stuff that ties into this, um, usually that's a pretty good rule of thumb. It rises in the morning when the sun's raising, thermals are raising. Uh, in the PM, it's sinking. Like I said, it will always trump the wind. So if the wind is in your face and the in the PM or uh, you're in a PM hunt, just because your wind's going one way with the wind doesn't mean that it's not going to go the opposite way. That way, if you're hunting above a line of travel and your and your thermals are going to sink down. So I always help folks with is it's it's real simple to to start with, right? If your AM if your PM stand location, if your approach is from underneath or the downside, let's say your stand location was here, from the downside of this line of travel that's maybe on a bench, let's say. If your access is here, your stand, and then the line of travel, it's a PM hunt. Don't cheat the system. There's a, there's a point and, a, and a, a reason to do that. This isn't there. We're not there yet. Uh, treat it as that. So look at your access. Look at your line of travel. Is your access below the line of travel? If it is, easiest thing to do is get the wind. Hunt this on a east wind with PM thermals. Keep it there. If your access is over here, then this is PM. Your it's stand. Your line of travel. You're below it. Your access is here. So this is a west wind PM hunt. Very simple, right? Uh, just the other side of that is an AM. If your AM, if you have AM approach from above, your roads up here, uh, you have internal access, whatever the key key is feature that you're hunting off from, um, and your access is up here. You're hunting this on a west wind AM because your your thermals are raising for the most part, right? They're raising, and you're above the line of travel, so you're going to hunt this on a west wind AM. So you don't have to cut the line of travel. This side, you'd be hunting it. Your, your access is up here. Your line of travel is here. So you're hunting that on a AM east wind. You can't change the blueprint, guys. When you hear me talk about that, you can't change the blueprint of the ground. You're not going to change it. You, you can't physically change that with an excavator. So there's a lot of things that you can change. Bedding areas, create things, lines of travel. Uh, contour is not one of them. You're not going to change it. So respect it. And figure out a way to hunt it right so that that's kind of the starting point right that that'll get you in motion 
So what we're going to talk about right here, guys, is cold air settles. So one thing to keep in mind is um, just because you've got, a, let's say it's an AM situation and that you have a creep sh uh, shelf in the bottom, if that air, if you have cool air and that creek uh, is cooler than the air, let's say, that creek is going to draw, that thermal is going to, is going to pull. It's going to affect... Maybe you're going to get the tumble. Maybe it's just not the clean. Maybe your thermals, the perfect world is, right? You're hunting a situation where your thermals and your wind are working together for the most part. That's kind of a bulletproof situation. Blowing wind into that river that we talked about. Blowing that wind into a uh, drainage where you, you're, you're you know, putting the wind over top of a deer's head. Stuff like that. Get them both working uh, with you, not against you, and uh, you'll have more success. So one of the one of the things on this right here, guys, that we'll touch on. Let's say you have an AM access, and it's not a real st steep incline. Maybe maybe this is like this instead of like this, and you've got an AM access. You get into to more of a you start hunting that more of the Halloween time. Let's say if you're in the Midwest here in Kentucky, uh, maybe that's like end of October or uh, end of November if you're down south. That pre rut starts kicking in you start hunting those mornings you, you dive deeper into the property you go into an area where the deer aren't right you get down there and it just happens to be that that stand is it's it's a little fall to you right so you're worried about the am thermals rising if you have water in the back of that it's going to pull right so um cooler air settles right so if it's one of those mornings where it's actually going to, it starts out, let's just say 30 degrees and you look at your, you know, your six o'clock temp is, uh, your five o'clock temp is 30 degrees, your seven o'clock temp um, during huntable hours, eight o'clock temp, whatever that happens to be, is 40 degrees. What you're going to find those days, then you're going, you're going to find that the thermal pull is stronger. But in that location, you get down in that in that shelf, let's say, you're down in there hunting them in the morning. Even though that it's falling to the outside, so you're, you're worried about your thermals chasing. If it's cooler in that bottom, it's going to settle. So your thermals are going to want to try to rise. That cool air and that pull of that creek shelf, let's say, is going to keep your thermals down there. So what I have found is there is a limit of how much below, so on an AM hunt, can you hunt below the line of travel? The answer is yes. The steeper it gets, it kind of takes that out. You take the pull of, of something, a real deep drainage where it's really cool, water sources, something like that. Uh, you take that out, you're, you are pretty much guaranteed that it's, it's going to pull when that sun comes up, right? It's going to pull and you're going to get yourself in trouble. So, so. Scent hubs, guys. I'm going to touch on this real quick with you. Scent hubs are, we're going to use this one right here. Scent hubs are, there is usually when you're finding a bunch of, if you're in Ridge Country and you start doing some postseason scouting, you're going to find one of these. And there, I would be willing to bet, guys, that there, I mean, you could go down to five acres. I've, I've been on five acre pieces that have scent hubs in Ridge Country. I've been at 500 acres that have many. I've been on five acre pieces that have four of these, right? Depending on the lay of the land, you're going to find in Ridge Country a spot that is totally tore up. That has just rut stand written all over it. Rubs, uh, you know, you start looking at the, that, um, you know, them rubs, some shavings from them rubs on top of the leaves. You know, you can tell that it was more of a um, more of a pre-rut or an aggression rub. Uh, if it's below the leaves, if you if you find a rub, you look underneath it. If all that stuff's below it, maybe there's a chance that um, you know that was made shedding velvet. So, does it really pertain to your your fall hunt, your pre-rut hunt? Maybe, maybe not. Right. So, something to look at. Well, we're going to find guys. You're going to find them in those areas where there's so many things working for them. They're spending a lot of time there. Uh, the dough, the information from the dough is coming down in there, right? They're, they're collecting. They're, all of this wind tunnels are dumping into a location, um, and they're getting they're getting information. They're getting information from one ridge to the next. They're getting information from the top. They're getting information from predators. That's why they're tore up. But it's the best spot on a farm that you should never hunt. You can harvest that buck 
or those bucks just down the chain just a little bit uh, further don't put yourself in that I see time and time and time again we're all hunting sign and what happens is you dive into that sign and that sign is going to get you into some major troubles because the thermals are going to sink down into it in the p.m. you're going to blow a deer trying to get down in there uh, you know he comes in and he tries to scent check that area the downwind side of those scrapes habitat and that's swirling down there you don't have what we call clean air that will you know touch on in a later video you you don't have a way to dump that out of that area it's going to do this and dump back in there that's why all that signs there do not <laughs> i repeat do not think that you're going to pull that off you might get lucky and hunt it once and beat him uh, but it's a very risky piece i have physically seen guys and i've got I've got four or five right off the top of my head that I can tell you. I've seen probably some of the best whitetail hunting properties in the country absolutely destroyed because folks overhunt or hunt in general, but overhunt those areas. And what happens is I'm talking 120s, 240s, 320, 500 acre pieces that I'm, I'm referring to that you can destroy, if not the whole farm, a section of that farm because you saturated you contaminated right that area so the common joes of the country the use and eyes right maybe we don't a lot of us don't own that amount of property if you do that's great but i'd love to own some more some more land but here's the here's the answer if you're doing that if that's a possibility on 200 acres if you think you're going to pull it off on 10s and 20s and 40s and 80s it's it's not the thing to do right so don't risk it look elsewhere get take this learning this 101 teaching right and, and put yourself in a spot down the chain where the thermals and the wind are good for you and your chances go through the roof you can you can harvest him there just as fast or just as quick just as often somewhere else as you can hunt him as you can hunt him or kill him down in there and, and more so this is what, from here up, guys, this is just a 101, right, a teaching. We're going to look at this one right here. So we're always trying to teach that you put the wind and the thermals in your favor. Always looking down below you, what's pulling the wind, what's adding, what's fueling the fire, uh, stuff like that. Here's one to look at, guys. This leeward wind, so why are we talking winds when we're talking thermals, right? Leeward winds are a huge piece of hunting uh, thermals. And here's why. A leeward wind, guys, in general, a leeward wind means that the wind is on the opposite side of that with a wind, wind direction or ridge, ridge, ridge country. So if you have a ridge uh, and you have a west wind, the east side of that ridge, the east side is your leeward wind. And the reason for that is, guys, is when you add thermals to this, the reason this makes this an deer's world makes that so important is because on like an AM, so you have a west wind AM, so these thermals are going up here, right? These thermals start raising. This side, these thermals are raising as well. Then what you get is you get this wind, that you add the wind to it. So you got thermals raising here, you got thermals raising here, you add the wind into it, and it's dumping all of this information right back on top of this spot. So not only is he cruising, and getting the information from the side that he's on, he's getting information from both sides. He's getting a, possibly getting information from the bottom, the other ridge. They are hard to beat. A leeward stand situation comes into that where you can actually put, instead of the wind at your, you know, hunting out west wind, you'd be normally hunting over here. You put this wind at your back. So these thermals are, are racing up here normally, right? Racing up here. As that thermal pull starts in the morning, an AM leeward sit, right? Thermal's raising, wind at your back, right? Wind at your back instead of in your face, and you're dumping the wind over the top of this. You're, you're forcing the thermals. The, th the thermals are coming here. Your wind is coming here. You're taking the thermal, you're taking the wind, and you're dumping it, putting it over top of their head. It's a, a very... A very attractive spot there are more big deer in this country that fall on a leeward sit stand than any other stand location hands down period
problem with that is, guys, they're not as they're not as um, they're not as easily found. There's not as many of them as you think there would be. This here, if this ground is not as steep, this goes away because this wind now is going to dump back on them. You have to dump this wind into the neighbors. You have to dump this wind into a waterway. You have to be able to dump that wind somewhere that you one you can't control. And I even watch where you're dumping it. Just because you can't hunt the neighbors doesn't mean the deer aren't bedding there, right? So you really got to watch how this works for you. Because if this is flat, this dumps back on these deer head and they're going to nail you every time. If you have one of these, it dumps over their head. You push it off to a non-deer area. Guys, it, it's, it's a weird feeling, right? Putting the wind at your back. But that's where in Ridge Country... We can take advantage of that stuff where folks that don't have um, don't have contour, they, they don't have that. You really have to watch a, uh, the wind, right, period. So not the case in Ridge Country. So one thing I want to touch on here, guys, to finish the leeward stand situation, make sure if you have one of these, let's say you have a ground blind right here or, or something like that. If you, this information that they are getting, is from their world, right? From let's say three foot and below. So it might be from this ridge. It might be from that ridge. It might be from here. He's getting, they're gaining that information from such a far, but they're gaining it at ground level. So if you have a situation, I'm just gonna, they're, they're gaining it in here, right? If you have a situation where this is a ground blind and think you're gonna pull that off, that's not, if, if, if this is steep, steep, you can pull this off. It, you can push it over their head. The goal is this, guys, is to get into this spot without cutting the line of travel, or if you cut it at all, cut it at the scrape. If you have to enter from here, you go across it, cut it at the scrape, so if you do get busted, it's there. But the perfect world is, is coming into this location and not having to cut this. So if you got center access, let's say, where there's no food in the morning coming in and your food is down below, something like that, that's the perfect world. But to finish this topic, guys, this situation right here, this information that they're getting is from the ground. You're, piece, you're a piece of the ground on a ground blind situation. But if you get in a tree, pardon my illustrations here, but if you get in a tree and you're 20 foot up above them right here, this wind, now it's a complete game changer. You've taken this and what is that total, right? Depends on the lay, the lay or the slope. But maybe you've taken the wind that's going to hit right here 20 yards. You went 20 feet in the air. Now you're getting 100 yards out of it, something like that. So if you, the goal is, is to have it timed that you get in this stand where those thermals, everything, the wind and the thermals are working for you. I would only hunt this on a consistent wind, not a wind that's going to, uh, you know, be 20 mile an hour and then two mile an hour and then 20 mile an hour, two mile. You want a consistent 10, 15, 20 mile an hour wind, something like that, that doesn't get crazy. But you want this consistent wind. What you're doing here, guys, is you go, you get into this, get into the stand. As soon as you get to that st that base of that tree, you have to quick get in the stand. There's no farting around. You get into that at the base of that tree, get in that stand just as quick as you can. As soon as you hit that platform, it's a complete game changer. If the elevation is correct and you're pu pumping that wind and that thermal back over top of his head, uh knock an arrow and get ready because if it's pre rut or rut and he's in the area um, and he's circulating your farm, you're going to kill him right there uh, in that stand location. So keep that in mind. If you want to pull this off and you do find one of these and you, you, you pretty, pretty, you know, convinced that you, you have one, don't fart around at the base of the tree. Make this, make sure if, if you're going to try to do this, you know, to take advantage of that, make sure it's a box blind. If it's on the ground, something where you can keep some scent contained. But I still wouldn't pull, try to pull that off. Go into a tree stand or an elevated box blind here, right here, guys. Get 20 feet in the air. You extend this by, I'm, I'm going to say most of the time on an average, probably by three times the distance over their head. But they are getting, and they think they're getting, and they are getting all of this information from the ground. You go up here 20 feet in the air, all of your information is above them. They're not getting you, but if you crawl down here uh, and you're at the base of that tree, when he comes when he comes around here, you're going to know because he's going to nail you. You're in his world. You have to get the scent above his head, the scent in the thermal above his head. Take your scent 
out of it, let him gain his scent that he's looking for, dynamite, dynamite, dynamite spot when we're talking about thermals. Here's, here and lays the problem, guys. There's a problem. A big X and a bunch of arrows here. So, um, hopefully I'm going to film this this year. I need to film this. Is This comes, guys, from hunting out west. If you are an elk hunter or you're a western deer hunter or whatever the case is, if you have spent some time in the west where you can actually see, um, and, and here in Kentucky, I've got one here, that you can actually see a long distance from a location. So one of my gun blinds here, guys, is I'm able to watch the ridge in front of me and then a next ridge, right? But it's a north wind stand. So I'm facing the north on a, on a north wind. I'm hunting that on an AM. I go in there, non-deer area. I'm actually hunting that. The, the thermals at that location are working for me. If that was not a box blind, I wouldn't hunt it. And like you're saying, why in the world? So I'm looking at that on a slope. My stand is, is let's just say here. Um, my stand is here. And one of the lines of travel that I'm hunting is actually here, right? So I'm looking north. So I'm up here and I'm keeping that clean air. I'm hunting it on this north. Let's just say this was north, but it's a, you know, north wind and the thermals. And I'm, it's, it's, I know I'm, I'm safe with my wind and my thermals. Here's, here and lays the problem. Not always does the thermal raise in the morning and set in the PM. And I get people, oh, that's nonsense. Well, here's, here's the deal. I've got one back here I can show you. I've got many spots that I can show you where I hunted and guided in elk country. And at some point, the thermals will raise in the morning. At some point, the thermals will sink in the evening. I'm going to show, some, show you something here, guys that I think a lot of folks will can relate to this, or maybe a, a light goes off here. You have to watch if you're when, if you're if you're hunting a spot that the sun, obviously in all spots, right, the sun's gonna come up in the east and sets in the west. If you are hunting a spot like I've got there, I'm facing the north. That's that sun in entire country, until you get way deep south or you get into Me Mexican hunts or something like that, right? Which that doesn't even affect down there as much. If your sun is rising in the east, setting in the west like it always does, but if that sun is in the southern sky, right? What happens is when that sun comes up in the mornings, there's a time this wind or this thermal is going to rise. This thermal is going to sink. And why is that? Because as this rises, as the sun rises, keeps elevating in stages, what happens is, guys, it casts this right here is where your sun, your sun beams are hitting the slope right here. So as this rises, this thermal is, is, is following the sunrise, right? It just keeps elevating. The sunrise keeps going. The thermals are rising. But over here, what this is, guys, this is casting a shadow. So, where it's casting that shadow, your thermals are actually, the sun's going here, and as it goes this way, the, the, the sun is here, creeping over that ridge behind you, that sun, sun starts rising, this is a casting a shadow, like I said, these are actually sinking. So, AM, thermals are sinking. That's what I've got back here. If that wasn't a box blind, and it wasn't a gun situation where I can get, I can put myself in there, and get away with that from afar, I would never be doing that if I was hunting that from 30 yards in a bow hunting situation. The only thing I could do is wait till, wait until that 8 o'clock time where this is clear, and then as soon as this reaches here, as soon as the sun reaches there, this is going to pull because the sun, there's no shadow involved. This is going to continue to pull because it's all the thermal pull from that sun is up above a level playing field. Something huge to keep in mind, guys. I find a lot of spots where guys are thinking that they're doing the right thing by hunting an AM thermal. The problem with it is you've got a ridge to the, your south, and that ridge is dictating all of that. So I've got one, two, three spots on the farm here where the thermals raise. or the th I've got three spots on the farm here where the thermals sink in the morning before they raise. And this is after daylight. 
most people think, well, I'll just wait till gray light and go in there. Gray light doesn't cut it. You have to wait until the thermals are completely pulling. So the way that the farm here in Kentucky lays, right, I've got a ridge on my southern side on my, me and my neighbor that runs uh, east and west on my south fence row, right? So what happens is, is my whole farm, because of that sun, is on the southern side of their ridge. My whole farm is affected by the thermals that raise and pull the entire time that that's raising. It's affecting all of my AM thermals are actually sinking an hour after daylight instead of rising because that southern sun can't get over that blocker. Huge, huge piece of the puzzle, guys. So make sure look into your look into your spot and see if that is affecting you. So like I said, so much stuff here, guys. Such a awesome topic. Uh, boy, <laughs> the deer, once you figure it out, once you go the extra step and really put a lot of thought into that, playing the wind, maybe you have a leeward set, stand, maybe you don't, taking this into consideration, not saturating an area. Um, the, the, the moral of this whole teaching would be this. Play it safe until you get it figured out. Always remember, try to put the wind and the thermals together. And always remember that the, the thermals are always going to trump the wind. So if you learn those, those important pieces, uh, Thermal 101 will get you, like I said, 50% there. Um, and uh, the rest is to be learned how your farm lays. Because I'm here to tell you, my farm does exactly what I told you. You go a half mile down the road here, that southern sun and that southern sky is, is opened uh, is is an open shot totally different deal totally different layout on how the how the uh, thermals raise in the morning and set on a p.m. hunt so hope this one helps guys like I said this will get your brain churning uh, but uh, there's a million questions that we could answer on this one and that's why we're going into adding this to a very very important piece we're going to add this to one of them uh, one of the six videos in that six video series uh, on our training camp, which our certification training camp, we're calling it. Um, that's going to be, we're, we're working hard on it every day and hopefully be the first of October, middle of October. That's available for the kind of the DIY guy that wants to design and build a property themselves, or even someone that I worked with or someone that just really wants to hone in and, uh, go the extra mile and become a, a whitetail geek along with me. Um, there's so much more I can teach you on that than these videos here on YouTube, guys. So here is the here is the um, just the screenshot. Take a screenshot of that and put yourself, put your farm in this situation. And uh, boy, I think you're uh, you're you will expose a lot of good and a lot of bad on your farm this fall. Thanks, guys.